Duke Ellington was born Edward Kennedy Ellington on April 29, 1899 in Washington, D.C. It was at the age of seven Ellington fell in love with the piano. He turned down scholarships to pursue his passion and at the age of 17 began to play professionally in the D.C. area. He took his band, the Washingtonians, to New York to play on Broadway. There, his small band grew to a 15-more orchestra, even performing to the all-white audiences of the famed Cotton Club. When not playing for sold-out crowds, Ellington was recording throughout the 30s and 40s. Some of his most famous work includes It Don't Mean a Thing If You Don't Have That Swing and Prelude to a Kiss, which was remastered by Coltrane. Other than recording, Ellington and his band made appearances on radio, movies, and other entertainment. After World War II, the big man era died until Ellington's last hurrah as a musical heavyweight when he won the Ears of Thousands at the Newport Jazz Festival in 1956. In the meantime, however, Ellington won eight Grammys and 16 honorary doctorates, as well as many other achievements. On May 24, 1974, at age 75, Duke Ellington died of lung cancer and pneumonia. His last words were, Music is how I live, why I live, and how I will be remembered. More than 12,000 people attended his funeral. He was buried in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City. Louis Armstrong was born August 4, 1901 in New Orleans, Louisiana. His childhood was bittersweet. Growing up in poverty, he was sent to a home for juvenile delinquents. However, it was there he took the young sound of jazz and made his own. His instrument of choice was the cornet. He caught on fast playing in marching bands and soon took his talents on the road performing in boat shows. It was not until Armstrong was 22, fame knocked on his door, when he was asked to perform in Oliver's Creole Jazz Band. There he became popular with such solos in Tears and Charms of Blues. He left the band soon after and created other jazz masterpieces throughout the late 20s. But Armstrong's explosive creativity could not be contained. This left him no option but to go solo, which is arguably the best decision ever made. Armstrong was now playing trumpet and was superior to any other sound and truly defined what it meant to the jam. Throughout the rest of his life, Armstrong continued to record music until his death on July 6, 1971. Armstrong once said, there are two, time, two kinds of music, the good and the bad. I play the good.